we want to evaluate the land integral along the curve C of f dot differential r, where the vector field f is given here, and the curve C is given by r of t, where t is on the closed interval from zero to pi. Looking at our notes below, to evaluate the land integral, we'll first write f as a vector valued function of t using the x, y, and z components of r of t, and then differential r is equal to r prime of t dt. Once we have it in this form, we'll find this dot product and then evaluate. So let's first find f of x of t, comma y of t, comma z of t. Notice x of t equals t, y of t equals sine t, and z of t equals cosine t. So looking at f here, the x component is four times z, so in terms of t, it's going to be four times cosine t. The y component here is negative two times y, so in terms of t, it's going to be negative two times sine t. And the z component here is just negative x, which in terms of t would be negative t. Now let's find our prime of t. So the s component is going to be the derivative of t with respect to t, which is one. The y component will be the derivative of sine t, which is cosine t. And the z component is the derivative of cosine t, which is negative sine t. Which means the given line integral along the curve c is equal to the integral of the vector valued function f as a function of t, which would be, again, four cosine t comma negative two sine t comma negative t. And this is dotted with r prime of t dt. Well, r prime of t is given here. So one comma cosine t comma negative sine t dt. The limits of integration for t are from zero to pi radians. And now let's find this dot product. We're going to have four cosine t times one, that's four cosine t. And then negative two sine t times cosine t, that's going to be minus two sine t cosine t. And then we have negative t times negative sine t, so that'll be plus t sine t. And now let's evaluate this on the next slide. For the next step, let's write this as three separate integrals. So we'll have the integral from zero to pi of four cosine t dt minus integral from zero to pi of two sine t cosine t dt and then plus the integral from zero to pi of t sine t dt. And now we'll go ahead and integrate. The antiderivative of four cosine t is going to be four sine t. Here we'll have to perform u substitution, where we'll let u be equal to sine t and differential u is equal to cosine t dt. So notice in terms of u, all of this would be 2u times cosine t dt is differential u. So with respect to u, the antiderivative would be two times u squared divided by two, or just u squared, which means in terms of t, we're going to have minus u squared would just be sine squared t. Now for the last integral, we we'll have to perform integration by parts, where for review, the integration by parts formula is the integral of u dv equals u v minus the integral of v du. So for this integral, let's let u be equal to t. So if we let u equal t, then differential u is equal to one dt or just dt. And if u is equal to t, that means differential v would have to be equal to sine t dt. So we integrate to find v, the integral of sine t dt is equal to negative cosine t. So applying the integration by parts formula, this integral is equal to u times v, 
which would be t times negative cosine t, or minus t cosine t, and then minus the integral of v du, which would be negative cosine t dt, so this becomes plus cosine t dt, which means the antiderivative of the original integral is going to be plus, and then we'll have negative t cosine t, then the integral of cosine t is equal to sine t, so we have plus sine t, and limits integration are from zero to pi. Now we'll perform substitution. Let's go ahead and factor out the four. So we'll four times the quantity sine pi minus sine zero minus, here we're going to have sine squared pi minus sine squared zero. And then here we're going to have plus the quantity negative pi times cosine pi plus sine pi. So all of this minus negative zero times cosine zero plus sine zero. So simplifying, sine pi is zero and sine zero is zero. So four times zero would be zero. And because sine pi and sine zero are both zero, this is also zero. And then simplifying here, we're going to have negative pi then times cosine pi, which is negative one. Sine pi is zero, so we have all of this minus zero times cosine zero is zero, and sine zero is also zero. So all this simplifies to pi, or as a decimal approximation, we can say it's approximately 3.1416. I hope you found this helpful.